Dag nabbit, will somebody out there please tell me what's wrong with me? Listen, I can't figure out what's going on. Maybe you can, because I sure don't get it. It's like my mind goes one way and my body goes another. My heart wants to do something, my body says no. Uh, my body says let's do something, my heart says no. And my body does what it wants to do. Isn't that what you call the can't help it? Well, listen, I ran across this scripture, okay? This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents and God's Word. That's what we're going to deal with right now. This is for those of you who are dealing with that dilemma. It's a pain in the butt, and it's a real trip trying to figure out, hey, what the heck is going on upstairs? So listen to this. This will help you relax a little bit and not get so frustrated with yourself. You know, like, okay, here we go. Romans chapter 7, starting at verse 15. Check this out. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, yeah, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then, O Lord, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God, after the inward man. But I see another Lord in my members, warring against the law of my mind and be bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then when the mind... I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And as my sister would say to Spats Two Cents, go figure. Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Oh yeah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, 
If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You know, we don't realize how much power we have at our disposal. Sometimes, you know, we just don't get it. It's like, hello, anybody home? Lights on, nobody home? I don't know what's up. But listen to this. This is what the Lord brought to my mind to share with you. Three examples. One, got the can help it. Two, got the can help it. Three, I just can't help it. Now check this out. Number one, I started smoking when I was 13, dabbling, you know, a little puff here, a little puff there. I got into a two pack a day cigarette habit, cigarette habit when I got my hands on my own money and my own job. At 18, I zoomed into two packs a day in warp speed and spent the next nine years smoking. Now listen to this. When I started looking around, this is what I used to do. I would buy posters, pretty posters from the 70s, put them up on my bedroom wall. Beautiful, colorful renditions of how smoking killed you. I would buy uh, filters for my cigarettes, for, for the filter part. I would add filters, water filters, all kind of extended filters to minimize the damage because girlfriend could not stop. Now, once I realized there's a problem here, uh, we don't want to kill ourselves now through these lungs. It's the only set I got. Can't take it back to the manufacturer and get another set. So instead of me doing slow suicide, let's stop. Do you know every time I tried to stop, I could not? I mean, it wouldn't even be a matter of hours. I could not stop. And here's the trip. I enjoyed smoking, but I wanted to stop. Really bizarre. I knew from the research that had been done and things I had heard that Smoking was not cool. So, lips dry. So what I did was I started looking up things that would make it easy to stop it. That I wouldn't go to the store and buy my carton of cigarettes. And I'd be right back at the store in a New York minute. Or I'd be calling my best friend over the wall talking about, Hey, Edie, you got any cigarettes on you? I couldn't stop. That's can't help it, number one. But let me tell you this. When I got saved, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I want to look you eye to eye. When I gave my heart to the Lord, the Lord quoted a scripture to me one night when I came home after I got saved in the morning. And after I said to him, loaded with temptation, now I got to have me a cigarette because I ain't had one all day. The Lord spoke to me and said, your body is the temple of God. So I bargained with him. I said, you know what? If you really don't want me to smoke, I mean, really don't want me to smoke. I'm going to try something I heard the women do at church. And I'm asking you to show me what your attitude is. If you really don't want me to smoke, then it'll work. If it doesn't matter to you. It won't work, and I'm going to smoke. I was being real, and I was negotiating big time. So I took my pack, of, my full pack of cigarettes with no money in my pocket that night. And I balled up the pack, and I turned it into crumbs. Because in my mind, in my heart, I did not want to play games 
with this new start of Christianity. I didn't want to be the hypocrite that turned me off for years when I, when I saw other people being those kind of hypocrites. I didn't want to be one of them. So I wanted to be real even for my own sake. I tore up the pack of cigarettes. I got ready to toss them in the trash and with a body and a heart full of fear, not faith, fear. I took the cigarettes, I got ready to toss them, and I, I hollered, I bind the desire for these cigarettes in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. This is where the power of Jesus comes in. And he who raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. Listen to this. I felt something physical you guys lift up off of me. You know, something was there. I didn't know it was there, wasn't aware, never felt it before. And all of a sudden after the words in the name of Jesus comes out of my mouth, I feel something lift up off of me and go like something had been sitting on my chest. It was a very physical experience, you guys. This was not my imagination. I felt that didn't expect for it to work, let alone feel anything. I was delivered that night. Didn't want the cigarette was gone as soon as that thing jumped off of me. Now, check this out. Can't help it's number two. The Lord gave me a dream to help me minister to a group of people, a group of inmates. And sometimes God will place you in someone else's place. You don't always have to experience it if you're uh, willing to see the other side, if you're willing to check out both sides of the coin and you desire understanding, you desire insight so that you can be more sensitive and compassionate without being condescending or judgmental. If you are willing, God will give you insight. And God gave me a dream. And in this dream, you guys, I dreamt I was in an argument with somebody. And I was cussing and a fussing and a cussing and a fussing. And you know what I thought in my mind when my mouth was going. Dip, 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 dip. My mind said, girl, you sound so stupid. Why don't you just shut up? The other side of my mind said, I don't know. I don't know why I won't shut up. I do sound stupid. Dip, 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 I could not shut up. I literally could not shut myself up. I was cussing and the fussing and the cussing and the fussing, yelling and the hollering. It sounded so idiotic to me. I really could not figure out why I wouldn't just shut up and walk away. Didn't even make sense to me. And while I'm thinking and feeling that, my body is still acting a fool. My mouth is talking nonsense, talking loud, saying nothing. God gave me an understanding that there are people out there who are so dysfunctional. They don't know why they keep doing what they're doing. They know it's counterproductive. They know it's stupid. They know there's, there's nothing good that can come out of it. But they can't stop themselves. It's like this this foot and mouth disease. They just they just keep doing it over and over and over. And they keep thinking, why don't I shut up and walk away? But it keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. Can't help it. Can't help it's number three. Now, I want you guys to think about this. Because sometimes we really don't get why we do what we do, the way you do the things you do. Okay, so we go through these changes and we get confused and we don't get ourselves. You know, I mean, I used to say this all the time when I was unsaved. I don't even know who the heck I am. I don't know why I'm here. I'm just as empty as I can be. I might as well call myself the walking dead because I sure don't feel alive. And I had the can't help it. I would get into relationships 
I knew was going nowhere. I would hook up with a guy I didn't even like. Listen, listen to this, you guys. I, I would go out with guys I didn't even like. Why? Why, you ask? Yes, well, here it goes. Because dum diddy dum dum was lonely. Dum diddy dum dum was empty. And dum diddy dum dum was bored. And having a piece of man for dum diddy dum dum felt better than having no one at all. Doing something boring was better than being bored doing nothing. I know it doesn't make sense, but does any of it make sense? No. That's why we wonder why. Why can't I help the winners? Why can't I stop? It's in our flesh. It's in our spirit. These are wounds. It's brokenness. It's mindsets. It's insecurity. It's a drive that, that makes us want to feel substantial. It makes us want to feel like something's happening that means something, even if we don't know what the heck it means and it sounds like nothing to us too. Stuck on stupid. So I say that to say, when Christ gets in you, you get to know yourself. This God showed me who I was. God revealed his supernatural love to me. That validated me. So I didn't have to run around looking for men to do that. No human being can do that for you. So you don't have to keep walking into what you know is an abusive situation just so you can say, I got a man. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You got hell on wheels, baby. Quit settling. Quit lowering yourself. You do not have to. You are somebody. You are beautifully and wonderfully made by God, your creator and your father who loves you with an everlasting love. And he won't use you, take you or abuse you. So I say all that to say, thank God for Jesus Christ. He gives us the power. He gives us the desire to seek God out and actually experience him. Seek him and see what you will find.